I grew up in Pocklington, just outside of Hull, UK. My mum, dad, little brother and myself lived in a large six-bedroom house. It was an old rectory next to the church ground in the local cemetery. And what I'm about to tell you happened when I was around 13 years old and has stuck by me to this day. We never really thought anything of living next to the cemetery. For me it was the norm as I was born into the house. It's not like it was completely rural. We also lived opposite a large retail park with a supermarket, so I guess that evened things out a little bit. There was only one entrance in and out of the cemetery, with a large fence and river cutting off any other entry points. This will become relevant a bit later on. Anyway, when I was about ten, my parents started trusting me to babysit my younger brother when they went across the road to do the weekly shopping trip. Usually they go on a Saturday afternoon and my brother and I used the time to play video games and even indoor football, which was obviously banned when the parents were at home. This Saturday, however, was different. My dad had to work and did not get home until around 8.30pm. With the supermarket being open 24 hours, my parents decided to put myself and my brother in bed before heading over. As soon as our parents had left, my brother and I started speaking. One thing led to another and we ended up kind of daring each other to go and explore the cemetery. We both put on some clothes off the floor and, although no one else was in, we snuck to the front door and unlocked it. We left the house and headed towards the cemetery gates. We knew that Dad's CCTV kit that he installed after the bike thefts uh, could see the entrance clearly, so we put our hoods up as a poor precautionary measure if we needed to deny all of this in the future. As soon as we entered the cemetery, the darkness hit us. With no streetlights, 9pm in November can be pitch black. We were both already pretty scared, but neither of us wanted to show that to the other, so we started following the path around the cemetery. There was sort of one path that led in a large circle around the cemetery. No other paths existed apart from the odd one that was created by repeated walking in the grass. The cemetery itself wasn't massive, at the furthest point the entrance could still be seen, uh, the street lights almost like an ominous glow in the background. As we approached a large gravestone with an angel crafted in a dome on top, we noticed an old man sitting on the corner. We were both terrified when we realised he'd noticed us. It's hard to explain, but it was a terror of the overall situation rather than seeing somebody in the cemetery. We occasionally played football on one of the empty fields in the daytime with our friends and we regularly saw dog walkers and the like. We both turned away as though to head back up towards the gate when we heard a man shout something. Hey! We both turned back around to see the man who was sat down was not there. We'd both seen him so I knew my mind wasn't playing tricks on me. We looked at each other with fear in our eyes and started running towards the gate. We ran faster than we had ever ran to get out of there when the creepiest thing happened. Just as we were closing in on the gates, we noticed the same man from the angel grave walking down the path towards us. There was no way he got up here faster than us. Not only was he a clear pensioner, but this was the only real way, and we would have seen him. My younger brother was crying in fear at this point, so I picked him up and we ran past the man and out of the gates. I slammed open the door to the house and turned and locked it behind us. I ran upstairs to look out my parents' bedroom window, which overlooked the cemetery, and there was no sign of the old man. The creepiest bit though came the next morning. My mum and dad knew something was wrong when my brother wet the bed for the first time in years. They got the whole story out from him and later in the morning my dad told us we must have let our imagination carry us away because he checked the CCTV and other than his two poorly disguised sons, no one had been in or out of the cemetery for a good four hours either side of us and there was no sign of the old man. Anyone who knows the UK knows it has a deep, rich, and often bloody history. I've grown up in the UK and always used to think, despite this dark history, I always viewed it as a harmless country. That all changed though, a couple of months ago. Me and my friends, we don't believe in the paranormal, but enjoy a good laugh at the expense of these spirits. We used to frequent tourist ghost tours and stay behind on the grounds of old manor houses just for the laugh. One night, me and my two friends, let's call them Chris and Nick, we had our rucksacks filled with snacks, torches, 
and sleeping bags. We decided our target would be a place infamous for its ghost footage. I am referring to Hampton Court. We waited till around 11pm and under cover of darkness we broke into the grounds using a weak spot close to a wooded area. There we snooped around as silent as possible. We were dressed from head to toe in black. We mostly tried shitting each other up and looking for any creepy artefacts from the exterior of the building. At around 3.30 to 4am we sat down on some fresh grass just in front of the building, aware that the CCTV could capture us but not really breaking any laws rather than the trespassing laws and to be honest we were young and didn't care. We tried to be as still as possible and keep noise to a minimum and just enjoy the fun, creepy vibe a place like this only gives at night with nobody there. Nick was slightly paranoid about the cameras and proposed we should move out of camera's view. We all agreed and shuffled to a blind spot around 30 metres away. As it was summer, we knew we'd be leaving at about 5am as it would be going light and decided to just lay back and chill. I, stupidly, was almost dozing off when a pale light flooded the grassy area. All three of us, scared we'd been caught, turned on our stomachs in unison. I looked around and noticed, oddly, that a light was on at one of the upper levels. Shit, I thought, as I presumed a security guard was checking the palace due to being notified of possible intruders. Scared, we all lay, eyes fixed on the building, looking for any movement from the windows. A few moments passed and we began to let our guard down when, in the split of a second, a black mass raced past the window and the light flicked out. A shiver ran down my spine as me and both my friends lay frozen with fear. Chris's voice killed the silence as he said, It was probably just a janitor. Yeah, <laughs> I laughed nervously. We tried to forget about the incident and enjoy our last hour before having to leave, talking in only whispers in case a janitor or anything else heard us. A few minutes passed when, again, a pale light flooded our area. We turned to see it immediately flick off. Before I could say anything, it flicked back on, and then again, off. I looked at Chris and Nick, fearful, but not willing to admit it. What kind of janitor or security guard does that? This time it was Chris's turn to laugh nervously. As a precaution, we shifted behind a large, thick, evergreen, not wanting to be prosecuted. Or worse. As we were hidden behind this bush, the light once again scattered across the grass. I poked my head from around the bush and saw the light was, this time, the ground floor. Exactly parallel to the window, the light was on, on the floor above. No other lights on. I turned to tell my friends and looked back. The light had dimmed. Not turned off, but dimmed. I looked at the window to see a smoky black figure staring at us. I told my friends and we all shit it, assuming it was a security guard, and ran off under cover of darkness to a small scattering of trees. I turned back and noticed the light had flicked off. This is fucking weird. I said to my friends, I knew we should leave but the only way out was across the open garden with cameras and possible floodlights. I calmed myself and was thinking of what to do when one of the exterior floodlights, just out of our view, lit the grass up. We fucking shit ourselves, assuming the security was looking for us and tried to shuffle under a thick bush. From around the corner, unexpectedly, as I was looking for a shadow to spread across the grass, which did not actually happen. What did happen though, makes me and my friends absolutely mortified. 
from just around the corner of the building, a billowing black cloud, if that's what you could call it, started off across the lawn. Before you ask, could it have been a security guard? I mean, after all, the lighting wasn't too great. Well, here's the thing. This mat, it was floating a good two feet above the ground. We all lay there, feeling that it could see us as it went towards the tree line. We didn't stick around to see who or what it was, as all three of us run around the outside of the ground as best as we could, tripping one floodlight as we went. We exited from where we entered and never once looked back. Now, I don't know what I saw that day, but I'm a more open-minded person when it comes to the paranormal now. Let's just leave it at that.